The first step in making deviled eggs is to get that water boiling before you put your eggs in. The next step is take your soft slotted spoon, so a plastic slotted spoon, and place your eggs on them one at a time and place them in the water gently. Six eggs will make a dozen deviled eggs. Once you have your six eggs placed, you can turn your heat down ever so slightly to about medium. We want them to boil, but we want them on a rolling boil, a very slow, easy boil. And now we're gonna set our timer on our microwave for 11 minutes. Next, fill a bowl with ice. And we're gonna put some water in here and have a bowl of ice water ready to go for when our timer goes off. Turn off the heat and carefully lift out each one of the eggs and place them into the ice water. And in they go. We're gonna wait for them to cool off before we go to our next step. All right, so the next step in the process is to get these eggs de-shelled. Tap them on the top, tap them on the bottom. I like to take a spoon and dip it in the cold water. Now, somewhere inside this egg is a tiny little bit of membrane that exists between the egg and the shell. And what I want to do is I want to try and find where that is and come in with my spoon, my wet spoon, because that helps loosen that membrane, and then just see how quickly the egg peels right off the shell. There we go. That's peeled. I dip it in the water once just to get remove any bit of the shell, tap it on my paper towel, and voila, we have a shelled or de-shelled egg. Now I want to go ahead and do the rest and then I'll come back and show you the next step in the process. Now that my eggs have all the shells off of them, it's time to slice them. So what I'm going to do is use a sharp knife and just come in straight around. Leave as much of that yellow yolk intact as possible. It makes it easier for me to work with it when I haven't shredded it because then I can just take it out like this and drop it in my bowl. See how easily it just pops out? Sure, you can get it out this way too, but then I waste just a little bit of that precious yolk. And these eggs are all about here. So we know that this egg is going to need some salt. We know we got to put in some powdered mustard. I like to use quite a bit of powdered mustard. Now, some people put horseradish in theirs, and normally I would too. But I don't have any on hand, and that's fine. So we're gonna just put a little dab of this Dijon mustard. I'm gonna mix it up so I don't get too much water in there. There we go, just a dab, not much at all. And of course, mayo. So let's get our mayo in there. And we can always add more, I'm not worried about that. We'll mix it up and see how it's going. So let's go ahead and give this a little stir. Kind of check out our consistency, breaking up that yolk as we go. Now, if you're from the South, I know you're gonna say, where's the pickle? For some reason, and it's a Southern thing, uh, 
when I first moved here, I didn't understand people put pickle in their deviled eggs. Up north, we just use the horseradish. And we have kind of a spicy egg. But down south, they put dill pickle. I'm okay with them either way, but I do prefer them without the pickle if I have to pick one. Today, I'm just showing you how to do a basic deviled egg, and then you can decide what flavors you want to put in here. I've had them flavored with anchovy even. I mean, we have tried just about anything. All different ways to eat these fantastic eggs. All right, I'm liking the consistency of that thus far. But what I have to do is I have to give this a taste because I need to understand where I'm at. So let me go ahead and just give them a taste. They are nice. They need more salt. Maybe just a little bit more mustard. So I'm going to put some more mustard powder in. I'm just going to sprinkle some in. All right. And we are going to add in some paprika. ahead and boil that extra egg so that you have it for the tops. And there you have it, my deviled eggs. I'm going to give them just a little bit of paprika so that they look pretty. In the household I grew up in, we would also put a little bit of parsley so you'd have the red and the green, but I think that's more than enough with just the paprika. Thanks for watching For the Love of Food.